Community Health TV powered by Community Therapy. I'm here with accredited practicing dietitian Grace and we're speaking about gastrointestinal health. Big topic, but looking to give a couple of key takeaways for people to think about what is that? Why would it be a concern for somebody? And why would you refer to a dietitian? What can they help people with? So what's gastrointestinal health as a broad topic? Yeah, um, so gastrointestinal health can refer to a number of conditions. So to name a few, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, um, Crohn. Crohn's disease. <laughs> um, and in, you know, in general, we're really looking at gut health as well. So, you know, what's important about keeping our gut healthy and the, the reason we want to keep it healthy is to prevent um, symptoms or gastrointestinal symptoms. So things like diarrhea, constipation, flatulence or gas, bloating. Um, things that can impact things, people's quality of life. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. So lots of different conditions can fall under that banner and you've named you know, a couple that are probably some of the more commonly known um, ones. As a healthcare professional, coordinator, person in the general public, how do we identify these things? Maybe some ways you can just see that that's a diagnosis for somebody yes. and we can open up those conversations. But what would I say to someone? Am I asking about symptoms that they may yeah. be feeling? Yeah, and that's a good point that you've mentioned. It may be diagnosis, so it may be on someone's medical history, but it may not necessarily be impacting that particular person. So someone may have a diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome, um, but they may not be, they may be well managing their symptoms. And so a dietitian referral may not be appropriate in that instance. And that's where, you know, talking to the client and talking about particular symptoms, mainly around, um, you know, do they have, do they have any gut discomfort that they're experiencing, for example, how are your bowels going? Um, do you have any constipation or diarrhea? And that's where it can trigger a referral to a dietitian. So I could be prompted because I see it as a diagnosis and I could start that conversation by how do you feel that your irritable bowel syndrome is managed at the moment? Do you have any concerns? And that could lead me down some questions. Or maybe I don't see any diagnosis, so then I can just have a broad question that I just ask of, do you have any concerns about your bowel management or gut health? Yep. And someone's gonna say yes or no, and then that starts the question. Then really, a lot of people are gonna say yes, because it's very common. It is very yes. common. <laughs> so, so I think it's as a healthcare professional, and I, when I was, you know, the first couple of years out as a physiotherapist, I found some of these more sensitive topics of whether it's bowel management, or speaking to people um, and asking questions about incontinence. I found those a little bit difficult, um, especially like as a young male therapist asking maybe older women. I found that as a hard conversation. So I think falling back onto as a healthcare professional coordinator asking, we have a duty of care to ask these questions to help people because we know that there's often great things that other healthcare professionals, dietitians in this case, can help people with. And often the general public don't always know that, that there's possibly a solution there to dramatically change somebody's quality of life. So trying to keep these broad questions as, because there's a lot of questions we have to ask as healthcare professionals, but th I think that's a really nice, simple one-liner. Like, how do you have any concerns about your bowel management or gut health? And that can lead to a lot of things if you don't see a diagnosis. So that's one takeaway. What do you then do as a dietitian? So mm -hmm. yes, that is a problem for me. Yes. What can you do to help me? Yeah. So that's when, you know, we'll go in and do rather than just that simple question that you've just asked we would then do a quite a lot of follow-up questions from that to find what their main concern is. So is it constipation, diarrhea, bloating? And each one does have different um, strategies that we need to put in place. Constipation, we'd be looking at someone's fluid intake, their fibre intake, their movement, 
um, and if they're on any laxative medications or the types of medications that they are on that could be impacting their bowels. Whereas if someone, for example, had diarrhea or bloating or flatulence, that's when we would be looking at getting them to complete a food symptom diary um, because that is what's going to be able to allow us to assess exactly what they're having um, and also the symptoms that are associated with that to try and identify potential trigger foods. That's probably the best way of identifying it um, because at the end of the day, we don't want to restrict someone's intake if we don't have to. So by doing something like a food symptom diary, it allows us um, to identify those trigger foods without just playing, I guess, a trial and error mm. game. So there's a lot that you can do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the key takeaway from me in this video is thinking about does somebody have a diagnosis that may be gastrointestinal and you can ask how are you feeling with how that's being managed how is it impacting your life and they'll say that it's a problem or it's not and you can also ask that broad statement question how is your bowel management and gut health do you have any concerns and that can lead to it as well yeah very good all right thanks so much for your time in this episode we'll see you in the next one